Welcome to this evening's uh, virtual live workshop. Um, once again, I'm joined tonight with my colleagues, Emily, she's on the left of me over here, and Nathan again has, has donated his eyes for us this evening um, for this workshop with in, really focusing on anterior segment OCT. So let me just walk through the way it's gonna go this evening, because unlike some of the other uh, uh, live sessions we've done, we're doing something quite ambitious tonight. We're actually using two devices. So on your screen, you should be able to see the Spectralis camera, and you'll also see this machine next to me here. So this is the Anterion OCT machine, which to many of you might be a new device. And um, we've had it out for around about a year or so now commercially. Um, but the plan with this evening is I want to go through using the anterior segment module, otherwise abbreviated as the ASM lens. I'm gonna show you how that goes onto the head of the Spectralis. We're gonna go through the scan patterns with the Spectralis. Um, and then we're going to grab Nathan and we're going to jump over to the anterior. And I'm going to whiz over to that as well. And really what I want you to take away from this evening's session is the idea that this is very much an imaging session. The Spectralis is, of course, an imaging specialist platform. It's an OCT platform. And really the anterior is exactly the same, although it can do lots of other things such as biometry or corneal tomography. But for the sake of time, this whole focus of this session is really all about imaging. So I'm gonna show you the imaging with the Spectralis and then we're gonna focus on the imaging on the anterior. Okay, so without further ado, I'm now gonna switch over to uh, the, um, the actual view of the Spectralis, which you can hopefully see. And I'm going to show you how to fit on the anterior segment lens. Okay. So when you um, get the ASM lens with the Spectralis, it comes in a box um, like this. OK, so what you have in here are two slots. You have the actual ASM lens itself, which is this blue colored lens and an empty space there really that's designed for you to place your 30 degrees or whatever lens you've got on the Spectralis head into the, well, actually it's designed for the 30 degree lens. So it's to put in there to keep it safe because of course in a high throughput clinic, what you don't want to do is leave a lens like that sitting on the side of the table, rolls off, lens is broken, game over. Okay, so the whole process should start with putting this lens in this box. So I'm going to do that to begin with. As I say, that goes in the blank space. Let me just push that in there. Now, before I attach the ASM lens, what's very important to point out is actually the um, the actual telescopic lens behind the uh, the manifold there that holds the actual lens in. You see, when we're using this on the posterior segment, it's actually very short. So before we even attempt to put on the ASM lens, what's very important is you wind back. The spectralis head with the focus wheel and really the reason for doing that is as you can see here the asm lens itself has a very long um part of the bottom of the lens and what you don't want to do is push that into the spectralis head when the camera is still set for posterior segment imaging because you may damage the housing inside the actual head of the spectralis so that's something to be very mindful of now when you take lenses off the spectralis what you have on the actual uh, brass ring there is a little red dot, just like changing a lens on, a, on an old fashioned manual camera or even a, a modern day digital one. And it corresponds with a small red dot that you have on the lens. Now you probably can't see that, but a good guide to find out where that dot is, it may have been worn off as well if you're using an older lens, is look for where the collar cuts in a little bit and the dot should be around about there. Again, it should be also in the middle of where the sticker is as well. So if I just bring that a little bit closer, it's out of focus, we won't do that. <laughs> okay, so here's the red spot. We're gonna line up with the actual housing and simply push it in. And what it's worth doing is giving it a little bit of a wiggle. Okay. And then once it's in place, you'll know it's when it's in place because the movement of fitting the ASM lens will be smooth. And once that's nice and smooth, then you're confident to rotate it clockwise 
until you feel that click. Can you hear that click? It's a nice, satisfying click when that happens. Okay, now the other thing to remember, if you're moving this lens around, always be mindful of putting any fingerprints um, on the actual lens itself. And what I've very consciously been doing here, as, as I've been talking to you, is making sure my fingers are just holding the collar, keeping my fingertips away from that lens there. So here we go, we've got the lens attached. Now, of course, we can dial back in, but of course, we're not going to dial back in quite as far as we do um, with the actual 30 degree lens. And to be quite honest, I wouldn't dial this in until you're actually sat back at the spectralis where you can dial in the focus, because of course, now we've drastically changed the focus. We're going to have to zero that back in. So in a moment, I'm just going to come around there. I'm just going to get Nathan comfortable. Oh, by the way, you can all see we're wearing our masks. We're taking local precautions for this session. So Nathan and I are very safe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into capture mode. I'll just share my screen here. So I have a patient set up already. And we're going to go straight into capture. Now, of course, because we're using the anterior segment lens, I, of course, don't need to put in the eye data here because that's not going to affect the actual imaging we're taking this evening because we're really, of course, focusing our imaging on the structures on the front of the eye. So let's just click OK for there and go straight into the capture sequence. Now, of course, with the ASM lens, you can just capture an infrared image, but I think for the sake of time, we're going to go straight in into OCT mode and we're going to line up here. Now, before we do, you can see that there's something flashing at me in the um, left corner of the screen. And that is, of course, the uh, the focus. And it's telling me not in diopters now, actually in, mil in millimeters where the lens is. So what if I, what I need to do is dial that in until we get to zero. Now, this is very, very important with the anti with the ASM lens because um, what you don't want to do is move this once it's zeroed. Now, if you're as close as you can be there, 0.07 uh, millimeters, that's absolutely fine. The crucial thing is, is that I don't change it from around zero while I'm doing the imaging. Now, um, one very important point to consider when we're doing this is when we're using the ASM lens, you're going to be closer to the patient's eye than you are with your posterior segment lenses. Now, the, the average working distance with the um, ASM lens is actually around about 12 millimeters. So I think at this point in the world where we are right now, it's very, it's very important that we consider that when a patient is wearing a face mask, because at that distance, what you may experience is more of this COVID fog that we talk about in, in, in um, ophthalmic imaging at the moment. So just be mindful of the patient's breath on, you know, breathing up on the lens. So um, if local policy uh, agrees with it, then maybe it's an idea to just get the patient to lower down the nose part of their mask so at least they're breathing away from the lens. But I think Nathan will be okay for this. Now, before I uh, zoom in and start lining up the OCT here, I just want to let you know that, that Nathan um, has actually had uh, peripheral iridotomies performed in both of his eyes. So he's, he's again a brilliant test patient for us to use for this anterior segment session. So we're going to explore that. But first of all, we're just going to go through the different scans and the screen that you see with the ASM lens. Now, hopefully you can all see um, the actual live capture screen there. Now, what it's defaulted to on the screen there is actually the cornea. Now, if I click on this button, you can see there's three options now. I have cornea, sclera, and angle. And what I want to do here is just walk you through each of these buttons and basically what they mean when we're scanning the front of the eye. So just as a, a, a nice starting point, we'll press this cornea scan eight. So what does that mean? Well, it actually means it's a single eight millimeter long line or 15 degrees, as you can see in the software here. Now, 
if we look around and see what else is included in the scan parameters, it set the default anterior chamber depth to two millimeters. This is a thing that we can actually play around with when we're actually acquiring, because what this button does is it allows you to be able to get a nice sharp infrared image as well as a good OCT scan at the same time. And as you can see, the ART is set up to 60 frames there. So that's set up for a nice, um, well art, uh, uh, noise reduced OCT image. Now, what's very different about the ASM in when we're in ASM mode is the capture screen itself, the actual OCT screen is now split into one third and two thirds here. Now, what a lot of people forget with this um, screen is actually the bottom screen is the magnified strip from this actual scan window at the top. So what you can actually see in the software here is just this top window is actually the scan window. And the way we use it with the lens, with the ASM lens, is you really just want to do, use this magnifying box. It's almost like a quality check. But you can see on the OCT window there, where the sweet spot is for capturing this image with these small blue brackets on either corner. So I'm going to stop talking so much now. We're going to move in a little bit closer to Nathan's left eye. Now, um, kind of in a similar way to uh, doing posterior segment imaging, you can see a little bright spot there, except this time that bright spot seems to have um, some sort of material on it moving around. What you're actually seeing there is a reflection of Nathan's tear film coming off the very surface of his cornea. Um, so what I want to do is really line up my central bright spot in the middle of that circle and then just slowly push forward. And this is where, as a photographer, as a technician, I'm looking around the side of my camera while I'm doing this because I know that I'm going to be much closer to the eye than I would be normally. So it's very important that you consider that as you move forward, because you never want to contact the eye, of course, with this lens, because you'd cause some damage. So as we're getting a bit closer, I'm going to lower the light on that IR image. Now, what's important to recognize is that the internal fixation target isn't, um, it's kind of like a blur when we're doing ASM images. So what you really want to do is use the external fixation light and what can happen, like what's happening here, is the patient could actually go cross-eyed if you're too close with that. So it's a good idea to move that as close as you can just to see if you can get the patient's eye to fixate straight forwards. OK, thanks, Nathan. Really great. I think that's just about in the middle there. Now, the temptation, of course, when you see an out of focus image is to dive on that focus wheel and start focusing in. But you kind of got to fight that when you're using the ASM and not touch that focus wheel. Now, what's quite amazing here is we can actually see that peripheral iridotomy in Nathan's uh, iris there in the corner, but we're not interested in that for now. We're just gonna try and get a nice eight millimeter scan over the apex of Nathan's cornea. So again, I'm now positioning my line in the middle of that bright spot, okay? And as I push forward, lo and behold, here is Nathan's cornea in wonderful detail. OK, let's lower the light down a little bit. Now, his iris actually looks wonderfully sharp there. But just while we're there, let's have a little play with the anterior segment depth. And you'll get an idea, anterior chamber depth button, I should say, of how that changes the image. Did you see when I click to, I'd say probably 2.5 millimeters there, we've got a beautiful sharp iris image and of course Nathan's cornea. Now for the demonstration um, of what we're doing here, um, luckily for Nathan, but unfortunately for us, he's got no pathology on his cornea. He's got a very quiet, nice cornea. I'm just gonna take a corneal image. Now what's very important though, is you can obviously clearly see this beam of light, this vertical beam of light. Now this is of course an unavoidable artifact that we get with anterior segment OCT and it's simply the apex of Nathan's cornea and the way the OCT light reflects off it so depending on where your pathology is and what you're trying to image with this eight millimeter line you can rotate the joystick up or down to escape from that little um, highlighted point but again if it, if it is pathology that's right on the apex 
of course, every ophthalmologist in the world realizes that this is an artifact we do see with OCT. But just to keep a nice image, I'm just going to roll away from that and we'll start to capture. So have a blink for me, Nathan. That's really great. And we're going to lock that in place, just like we do with all our scans, and see how that quickly builds up to 60 frames. I'm going to capture that image. Okay. So we've got a nice eight millimeter scan of Nathan's cornea, which I'll come to in a moment. But let's go to the next scan in the preset series. This one is, of course, an 11 meter, uh, millimeter scan now. So really, that doesn't need that much expl explanation. It's just a few more millimeters than the, path, than the previous one. But importantly, look at the live capture window. I can use this box to scroll left and right and just to make sure I've got a good consistent signal. Now, of course, the signal will drop as we move away from the apex. That's just the way OCT works on the surface of the eye. But the important thing is that we've still got nice strong signal there. And we do because Nathan's apex is actually within the sweet spot of the scan. So it all looks good for our 11 meter millimeter scan now. So I'm gonna lock that in place again. Nathan, you can blink if you need to at all. I'm gonna let that build up and save that image. Okay. Now we come to some volume scans. Now, these are, to be quite honest, probably the most useful thing you use, because if you're looking for very fine pathology on the cornea, you'd be either highly skilled or pretty lucky to be able to get right through the middle of pathology sometimes with just one single line. So using the volume in real life is probably a, um, a bit more useful, to be completely honest, to get some tricky pathology. Because, of course, now we have um, multiple sections. On the small, we have 11 different OCT sections. So I'm going to do the same again. And we'll lock on and just show you what that looks like, clicking through a few of those images. OK. So although we're on cornea, there's nothing stopping me using this um, small pattern to actually push a little bit closer to Nathan's iris, okay? But again, because I've just moved a little bit, it's well worth having a little play with this um, anterior chamber button, because of course I'm, off, I'm on a slightly different angle now. See if I can get that a bit sharper on the surface of the iris, okay? And we'll try and lock that in place, see if we can get something here. I mean, we could do it here with the cornea button, but also we could do it with the angle one. I mean, really, it's up to you when, you, when you're scanning images like this, but the protocol we're on now is, of course, designed for cornea. Okay, so let's flick to large, and we'll go back to the center of the eye again, except this time, this will, of course, be um, a slightly wider scan, so that's a, a 15 um, millimeter, so that'll be, um, sorry, an 11 millimeter, 15 degrees, um, scan across the front of Nathan's eye now, so we can capture one of those, lock it in place again, whiz through the acquisition. Very good. I think another thing to remember is although we are locking in the cornea, it's well worth mentioning that um, sometimes with these scans, it's it's a bit um, it's a bit more important that you tell a patient to just try and have a good blink before you capture, and then press the acquisition because. The tracking is really working a bit harder on the front part of the eye. It's not like it's got a, a retina for a reference for an image. So it can be a bit more challenging in that sense. So let's click on the dense map now. And now you see we've got 25 sections very close together. So if we were looking for something on the cornea, you could lock that in and do a concentrated 25 section pattern. So Nathan, just close your eye for a second, have a little blink. I mean, it will stop as it's going through the acquisition just on the back of the eye. It's just good practice to tell the patient to fully load the tear film before you do imaging like this. OK, let's sit back for a second then, Nathan, just have a bit of a rest. OK, so on the screen, you can now see there's two more buttons. So the next one along is the sclera. Now, the sclera actually um, enables EDI when we use it. And I don't know if you can make it out on the screen, but actually on this top window, the scan window, the sweet spot has now dropped down to the bottom part of the scan window. 
Now, of course, that means that, that we're using enhanced depth imaging because we're set up now for the actual sclera imaging. So the way to use this scan is we would be um, obviously moving the fixation off to the side to try and image through the sclera. Why would you do that? Well, in some situations, a patient maybe have um, a surgical bleb that's been put there in place. Um, and you may want to do an image that will take the volume of that bleb. And you can see that this is a vertical scan pattern that you can place over a superior bleb on the eye. But you've still got all these other patterns that we had on the cornea one as well. Now, um, again, luckily for Nathan, unfortunately for us, he hasn't got a bleb. So I won't do the bleb image, but we'll do a scan, a single line scan through Nathan's sclera now. OK, so. As I mentioned before, we're going to move his fixation off to the side now. Very good. And we're going to push in. A bit different this time because we haven't got that tear film reflex coming off the surface. We're actually getting a bright tear film bouncing off the conjunctiva there. Now, what's interesting with uh, anterior segment imaging is if it's ever upside down, you're simply not far enough forwards. But when you get to when you get to this stage where you want to push forwards, that's when I'm tilting my head around the side and just checking I'm not going to come into contact with Nathan's eye. Now, although it's a sclera setting, look at that wonderful chamber chamber angle we're managing to see there. But I'm not interested in that. We're interested in Nathan's sclera for this scan. Now, as I move up and down with my joystick, can you see all those different structures of the sclera? absolutely astonishing detail that we can pick up there we can see all different parts of nathan's blood vessels running through his, his sclera we can even see almost the back the actual ciliary body there you can actually see a very faint line of the uh the peripheral you could say the kind of um anterior posterior face of the ciliary body if i go a little bit off to the side maybe even out to the aura serrata there and very far peripheral retina. It's a bit controversial, that, but yeah, that's where we're scanning. But the, here we could use the scan for any sort of pathology on the sclera, but you can see all the conjunctiva there as well. So again, we're not limited to a horizontal pattern. I can also rotate this scan if I wanted to explore any pathology. So let's just get a nice clear image of uh, Nathan's sclera there i'm just going to lock that in place and again because we're using edi i'm going to try and keep that scan down in this top window as low as i can so that the uh, the actual scleral layers are in that sweet spot for this acquisition so have a blink for me again buddy that's great down, down a little bit wonderful i'm gonna just build up that image okay and again while you're tracking and building it up you could still use this magnified view to explore around. What's really important is with spectral domain OCT, look at the detail we can get all the way through the sclera to that lip of where we can see the ciliary process. OK, very good. OK, so do you want to have a little blink for me again there, Nathan? Very good. What I'm going to do now, we're going to now switch to the angle button because quite frankly, nine times out of ten, it seems to be the, the main way everyone's using this lens at the moment. Now, again, that could be um, because it's a good surrogate for gonioscopy. It might be a good thing at the moment in COVID times to actually use a non-invasive way to assess the chamber angle. Or it could just simply be that a lot of glaucoma consultants are now using OCT more in COVID times. So they're more familiar with requesting images like this. Either way, I think it's great. It's a wonderful tool to use to assess the chamber angles and with the ASM lens it's, it's perfectly set up to do that. So we have three options on the angle button and you'll notice below that the OCT control is actually greyed out here because we're not really interested in getting the iris sharp. It's already been preset to what it was before and of course we're, we're not, um, EDI is enabled as well for doing these chamber angle scans because we want that um, high signal to be in the lower parts of the chamber angle at the recess point uh, where the iris uh, meets the cornea. Now we've got three buttons. The first one is for one anterior chamber angle, ACA. 
The second button is for two, so it's a long 16.5 millimeter scan right the way across the front of the eye. And then you have a small volume. So again, you'd use the volume if you're, for example, trying to investigate um, like a MIG implant or something like that, right in the uh, trabecular meshwork of the of the uh, of the anterior chamber. But let's just for now focus on doing a single um, anterior chamber. Now, as I said before, we'll use this setting to maybe explore Nathan's PI. Let's just line up over that anterior chamber angle. Now you can actually notice Nathan's got fairly narrow angles, actually, hence why he's had a PI in the past. Um, and I'm sure if Nathan could talk, he had, he's got his teeth together for me while I'm scanning him. I think it was found when you were seeing a customer, wasn't it, Nathan? You were showing them anterior segment, but they noticed his chamber angles were very narrow. So yeah, that hence led to him having that operation. Um, okay, but here we are. Again, I'm focused on the top window, not the bottom one, because the bottom one is just a magnified version. So let's try and keep that in the sweet spot, so you have a single anterior chamber angle. Okay, I'm gonna lock that in place again. Actually, let me just unlock that, lower it down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, wonderful, acquire that image. Now, can you see how bright we got the signal right down there into the uh, cha anterior chamber angle recess point? Is that a little twinkle of Schlem's canal I can see there, perhaps? Okay, now let's click to two chamber angles. And that, of course, is going to switch now to this very long line because we don't have to do that on both sides. And um, we can, of course, just do that um, one scan that will get both the nasal and the temporal chamber angles there as well now this is the tricky bit because sometimes nine times out of ten you you line up a patient and your oct looks like that when you're doing two chamber angles and you're thinking oh god is it me have i got to move the camera always refer to your fixation target light and try and move that around rather than the oct to level out that chamber angle now i'm just gonna just push a little bit further forward or again be mindful that you are a little bit closer to the eye when you're doing these two anterior chamber angle points but again we're keeping both angles in that lower sweet spot of the window now it's crucial to get this spot on because if we don't when we come to analyze these angles it simply won't let us if the image is, isn't good enough okay so it's very important so we get a nice clear angle. Now, again, I could use my zoomed in box here to just review each chamber angle. Are they nice and clear? I think so. If I really want to split hairs, maybe move the fixation a little bit. I'm going to lock that in place and build up to 60 frames of art and acquire that image. OK, now I'm making it look relatively easy here with Nathan. I'm, I'm I completely agree with anyone who says it's quite complicated to go and get to try and get those because, of course, patience can be a challenge all the time. So it's just about playing with that um, external fixator and like trying to line up the patient as well as you possibly can. Now, actually, while we're here, I'm going to use this single line to just put it over Nathan's PI there. Let's rotate the line so you get a bit of the angle as well as where Nathan had that hole punch through his iris. So here we can see the hole. OK, again, let's just move the magnifying glass over there. Very good. Right, let's lock that in place. See if we can build this image there. OK, and what we'll also do. Is we'll do a small volume over that area, too. OK. Might as well, we've got some pathology to look at here. So there, can you see how clear that is? Great, okay, let's lock that in place. And again, remember we're doing 11 sections now. So we get the chamber angle around that PI as well. Okay, Nathan, you can sit back and relax now for us. So that's all the scans we could do with the um, ASM lens. Let's come out now and we're gonna have a look at these images that we've been capturing on Nathan's eye, okay? So if we just um, 
look at the thumbnails before we go anywhere you actually get a reminder of what mode you were on when you were using um, all the different scan parameters with the ASM lens because it actually tells you in three little letters in the top right corner. So these are all the cornea mode ones. There was a sclera one, and here's the anterior chamber angle scan. Now, like I said before, you know, there's no real set rule sometimes. If you, if you see something and you're in cornea, Near mode and you capture it, um, it's not really going to change anything. Where it actually changes things is actually when you're using the um, analysis window, because that, of course, gives you tools which you can place over the scans. But we'll, we'll come to that in a second. Let's just have a look through these images. So here we can see on the cornea there, we got the wonderful IR image nice and sharp up on the left. And you can see that the crosshairs is matched over the top, well, of where we are on the iris. But of course, we're on the um, on the cornea here. Um, and one thing to remember is if you do want to measure anything, of course, you always leave it in one to one micron and you can zoom in and place calipers on the actual uh, the cornea. So if I wanted to, I could use my measure distance caliper tool and if measure maybe the thickness of the, uh, of the actual stroma there down to um, decibase membrane or indeed get the epithelium itself. Might be more of a challenge if I wanted to measure um, Bowman's layer, but again, we could always zoom in and put a tiny caliper on there, or indeed measure the tear film itself. Okay, so that white reflective band. Again, potentially you could say that's the tear film. Again, we can colorize these different overlays by just clicking on, right clicking, going to overlay properties, and you can save all these different overlays. If you were recording different pathology in different colors. And the great thing is, is these um, overlays will actually stay on the image once you exit out. So if um, a clinician was using these for something, um, they could save them on there. And of course, don't forget, you can always change the size of the actual numbers as well by going back to the right click and setting that to uh, a larger font size and you actually get those images. If you wanted to save that on the file as a digital record or indeed save that as an image to record some pathology. So that's just that um, that first cornea scan eight, the eight mil. Then, of course, we've got the 11. Same story, really, if you wanted to put measurements over the top of that. Clicking over to the next scan. This is, of course, where we've got the actual um, uh, 11 different sections and again just rolling up and down with the roller wheel we can review through those or we can play a movie same story with all the caliper tools we can put on top of this but of course you don't get a volumetric image um, and then we'll just go through some of the other patterns really quickly here is where i had a go at trying to get the pi of nathan's eye there we go okay so let's just escape out here for a minute because you get the idea with all these scans. What I want to do for the sake of time is we'll just, well, we'll, we'll stick on the anterior chamber angle scan and then we're going to jump across to the anterior because I really want to show you the big difference from imaging with, with the ASM lens to imaging um, with the anterior as well. So here, of course, we have the ACA image. Now, because um, I did a good anterior chamber angle image it's allowing me to place these tools over nathan's anterior chamber angles and if you didn't do a good job here it would simply give you a box that says measurements not possible and my my honest advice is check this before you get your patient to move away because the only way to remedy that is to simply do the scan again OK, so when it comes to placing these tools on the chamber angles, make life easy for yourself. Zoom in. OK, so we can use the plus magnifying glass there and we can zoom into. Let's go for Nathan's nasal chamber angle on his left, left eye. Now, on his left eye, I have these three tools on his right eye. Sorry, on his on his left chamber, I have these three tools on his right chamber. I have these three tools. They're kind of set up for either side. Now, the 500 and the 750, they refer to the micron, the micron length 
in this yellow line that my cursor is on. And the key with this, um, this default spot that the button, um, um, the pointer defaults to, is that's where you want to place your, your point of the scleral spur. Now, actually, let me just um, zoom out a little bit because on Nathan's eye here, it's quite challenging to actually see exactly where that is because his angles are actually quite narrow and close together. So again, you can make life easy for yourself. Click on the brightness and contrast, push the OCT brightness up, okay? Now we can just about see the top part of the anterior chamber angle, um, the scleral spur, okay? So let's just click back on my tool. and I'm gonna click this first spot on the scleral spur, then step two, grab this bottom line and actually put that in the interior chamber angle recess point. It's pretty much in the same place as a scleral spur because of the shape of his iris. Grab this other spot and we'll drag that to the top part of the iris tissue we can see there. And again, if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see that's a fairly correctly placed um, anterior chamber angle measurement. OK, so. That's how you place that measurement will whiz over to the other eye. I just want to make um, a little point about um, if a patient has very deep set eyes. So someone rang me last week and asked me if I could cover this while we're doing this session. So Nathan, if you just pop your chin back on there. So let's pretend someone who does, let's pretend Nathan has very deep set eyes. One thing you can actually try is actually get the patient to rotate their head and move their fixation out to the side. And if you do have a plus system, you can actually angle the spectralis head off to the side just to get that little bit closer because some patients' eyes are so deep set, you sit back now, that the lens may even bang their, their brow, um, particularly for an elderly patient with deep set eyes as well. So that's a little handy trick. So a, a matter of pivoting the head and actually panning and tilting the spectralis head to get those images. Okay, that's ASM. We're going to switch over now to the anterior. So what I'm going to share with you is the actual um, uh, the actual screen of the anterior itself, because what's very unique to the anterior compared to the spectralis is we actually have this screen on the back of the device. We're not looking at the computer screen anymore. We're actually um looking at the um at the live capture screen while we're using this system so what i'm doing in the background here is i'm just logging on to the software which is hix2 with the anterior and we're going to log into the software and do a capture okay but before i do let me just um reiterate what we do with the anterior so what's unique to this machine is um it's modular in the sense that it's a software modular platform. Now you can see on the screen underneath the logo of Anterior on there, you've got three separate logos and what each, I'm sorry, four separate logos. And what each one of those logos stand for is a different app. Now the first one um, on your left is actually the imaging app. So I'm gonna focus on using that one um, just to give you the contrast against the ASM lens. Then we have, it looks like a mini IOL with a ruler underneath. That's, of course, the uh, cataract app, which does full biometry and tomography and to give clinicians really all the information they need for um, uh, for lens extraction surgery. Then next to that, we have this anterior segment with the uh, ruler underneath. That's the metrics app. So I'm going to try and do imaging and metrics if time allows me. Um, and then maybe if we've still got time, I'll whiz over just the capture sequence of the other two apps because the fourth and final one um, on the right of your screen there is the cornea app which does full tomography which gives you topography um, um, in a, a very high degree of detail with lots of different maps available um, of the posterior and anterior surface of the cornea but again for the sake of time we're focusing on imaging for this session so i'm just going to go into uh, capture now now, hopefully you notice the screen has changed because now it's actually the Heidelberg engineering uh, logo in the middle with, of course, our four apps along the top. Now, what's 
wonderful about this machine is it's really very easy to use. You simply choose the app you want, and then you click away and, and use all the scan parameters. So I've chosen the imaging app, and now you can see I have an infrared image on my left and an OCT image on my right, surrounded by a bunch of buttons. Okay, but I'm going to come to that in a moment. What we're going to go, do to begin with, though, is um, actually we'll stay on Nathan's left eye for continuity. We're just going to push in now with the base of the anterior, okay? Because I want to show you something that's very um, unique and different to this platform. Now, as I move forward, can you notice that there's eight little refractive spots? Now, what they are are infrared LEDs around the objective lens. And unlike the Spectralis, what the anterior does is it uses these for tracking. So when it comes to tracking, the anterior is an incredibly unique and specialized product. Now, what I mean by that, if I move around my base and the joystick there, that's what you can see that circle moving around. Can you see the scan line is locked on the apex of the cornea there? And it's even giving me a color code for when I'm misaligned from green to yellow to, to red if I'm well out of place. But crucially, that line is tracked, it's locked on to that central point of Nathan's apex cornea. Now, this is just the default mode. And um, what I can actually do here is switch between the OCT in the main window to the infrared um, in the small window um, and backwards and forwards again, just by touching the touch screen on the back of the, of the machine there, I can just flick between the two. There we go. So the practice is really line up on your infrared, and then as you push in with your base, it's a good idea to make the OCT in the main window because we're green on the IR, but I now need to get green with my depth. So I'll just push forwards until it goes green in the main OCT window. Now, with the anterior, it's not called air art, it's actually called averaging. If I click on that, you can see that we have up to eight times averaging with the anterior. Now, the reason for that that we don't go all the way up to 100. It's with anterior segment things, they may move around, so it's not um, often advantageous to go too far with averaging, because you could blur out pathology if you average too much. So that's why it's limited to eight. But you can see that the scan resolution as well, we can push that up to 1024. They're A scans along the B scan line, and the default is on this kind of medium high scan resolution. You can see the scan length button as well there. Now, if I, can you see at the moment it's defaulted to seven millimeters? If I press the plus button on the back of the screen, it's now going to zoom right out and we can go out to 16.5 millimeters. Now, what's immediately different with the anterior is the depth of the OCT itself. We're not dealing like we were with the ASM lens on a narrow letterbox of OCT imaging. We can actually image. 40 millimeters deep with the anterior, which, what, which is what makes it so incredibly unique. So that's why in one image, I can see the entire of Nathan's cornea there, right down to his limbus. I can see the ciliary body on either side of his iris there. I can see the whole iris. I can even see his iris moving forwards and back as he accommodates for the fixation target inside. And crucially, I can see his entire crystalline lens there, absolutely uh, amazing. Now, there's another very important difference in the anterior to the Spectralis, and the reason why we can see so well through the limbus, and that's because, um, different to the Spectralis, which uses spectral domain OCT, the anterior is using swept source OCT, and the swept source is what's giving us this extra depth and extra signal as we go through the actual um, structures of the anterior chamber there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to capture this image you can see here, and then we're going to use the imaging app to investigate Nathan's um, peripheral iridotomy okay, in the top right corner you can see there. So with the anterior, what we do is we tell the patients to have a blink, and then if everything's green, I simply click the button, acquiring, and when it says processing, it's done. OK, that was the image. Nathan can now blink away and relax. And what's great is the actual software 
does its own summary of quality and can you see where it's giving me a pass that's basically told me as the as the photographer or technician that i've done a good image and what what it means is if if you take a bad image with this machine it will tell you and it actually won't save it you have to override it if you do that and i'll i'll come to that in a moment but here you can see a single line high quality because it's passed it's already automatically saved that little floppy disk icon there is grayed out because it saves a good image and what does the summary tell me if i click on the details is it tells me that the patient stayed nice and still they were fixating on the target and the tear film and lid didn't interrupt the OCT or the infrared image. So that's one of the um, many benefits of this platform is that it does this self-assessment every time we capture an image. Now, let's go a bit off piste and we're going to take some images over Nathan's PI. So I'm going to click on volume this time. And crucially, I'm going to disable the tracking. Now, when I do the camera goes blue so it's a bit more like the asm spectralis now it's just going to let me scan wherever i click the button okay but let's just go back to the pattern details maybe shrink this down a little bit whack a few more b scans in there and then what i can do now is if i click the center button that takes it off that central apex location i can drag my scan now hopefully you can see it on the screen little blue lines over the intended area and here you can see if i make the oct big in the window nathan's pi in wonderful detail in fact now i can actually see right the way through that hole of the um, anterior and posterior face of nathan's um crystalline lens okay so we're going to just lock that in well actually sorry not lock that in place we're just going to click the button now i'm going to take a series of images thanks very much nathan try and keep staring nice and still over nathan's um pi there off in the periphery now sit back for a second for everybody that's great now we get um a slightly different situation where it's not saved it now the reason for that is it's because i didn't have tracking on the computer can't tell if it's a good enough image so now I'm in control, I'm the human in control. And because I'm trying to record some pathology, I know exactly what I want. And I can play through all those different sections with these um, arrow keys and just confirm that I got the images I want of Nathan's PI with that scan pattern off in the periphery. And because I have, I'm gonna save that. And it will even warn me, do you realize you're scanning an image with no tracking? And I'm I'm brave enough. Yeah, I want that image. I'm going to save it. OK, so there we go. So before we whiz over to metrics, just to give you a little fast overview, I won't capture all these scans. We've got different patterns like the arc pattern. And we again, we can drag these patterns out as far as we want, all the way out to that 16.5 width. Add as many slices in as you like. Um, and again, the big thing to remember is when a patient's being imaged with this, because it's swept source, they don't see these lines capture. It's invisible. It's out of the visible spectrum. But what you can also do is, of course, customize any pattern you like that you choose. And we're, we're doing some very exciting research with different scan patterns right now with the imaging app. Now, I should add that the anterior actually comes with the imaging app as default. It's an OCT imaging machine that also does biometry and cornea that's the way you should really see this device now the thing i should remind you about is when we're actually capturing images with the anterior if i wanted to measure that pi with the imaging app actually i can't do it with just the imaging app i actually need the metrics app to measure anything on the anterior chamber okay with 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 just our oct line so i'm going to choose the metrics app now and what we're going to do is we're going to line up Nathan's eye again. And this time, this is a, an automated uh, pattern with the metrics app. And it's the same process. I push in. I've got my green line on the IR and my OCT. Let me put that in the middle. Needs to be at the right depth. So there we go. We've got that nice green color. I'm happy with that. Now, what this scan is going to do is actually six radial lines. But these have actually been. And um, calibrated for measurements. 
um, to the actual shape of, uh, of the eye, okay? So Nathan, have a good blink for me, and I want you to keep staring at that target you can see inside the lens there. There we go, that was six radial lines through, uh, oh, over Nathan's cornea there. So stick that fully down, that's great. Okay, so here you can see the six lines of the metrics up. I've got a pass, so I've passed the test. I've got um, good mo no motion, no uh, good fixation, tear film and lid. And again, the, the trick with this scan, and again, any of you that do use an anterior is when, especially when you do metrics up, Tell the patient to stare really wide because you just want to get that lid out of the way. Nathan already knew that and he opened his eye nice and wide for me. But on that vertical one, it just caught a bit of the lid. You can actually see on the screen there, it makes it like pink coloured when it's an area of the eye that can't be measured because of an artifact like the uh, the distorted limbus um, or indeed the lid, lid coming over the, uh, the structure there. So here we've got our six radial sections. Now, for the sake of time, I think we're just going to pass back now to the actual main screen so I can show you these images and then hopefully we'll still have time for some Q&A at the end. We got some questions then? Okay, cool. Um, so let's just switch back to um, my main screen now. So hopefully you can see um, the HiX2 software in the window. Now, what I've done here, don't be fooled, it says Emily Melbourne. We were testing it on Emily before we, we did the images there. Um, Nathan's images are there at the top. Can you see on the timestamp of where we've captured the images? So let me just open up some of these images so you get an idea of what it looks like. So again, different to what you're used to with our HiX software using the Spectralis, um, this is the Anterion viewing software, and this is really a very nice software platform to be honest, because it, it's it, we just like the colours. You've got the nice bright OCT on top of this black background, and as I say, with the imaging app, um, what we could do with this is really just look at this image at this point, and you can see the other captures are on the list um, on the left-hand side of the screen there. Now, in, with this one, of course, we, we did a, a few images, a few sections, and again, what I could do with this software is drag and drop the windows to make them small and large. And again, if I roll my um, mouse wheel up and down, look at that, we can see that detail, that quality we see right the way through that, um, that hole, basically, of, of Nathan's iris. Now, those of you that are eagle-eyed watching this webinar tonight, you may notice that there's actually a difference in resolution of the actual layers of the cornea and indeed the iris itself there. Now, that's because when it comes to OCT, there's always a trade-off. And the trade-off when we switch to swept source is, of course, we get extra penetration and depth, but we actually lose some axial resolution. So I'm often asked this from a research perspective. If you want the highest possible resolution on the cornea, you really, the ASM is a good lens to use to get that extra edge of, um, of actual resolution on the cornea. But still, it's that trade-off of why we're using this technology. And with Anterion, of course, we've got that amazing detail we get from the, the whole depth of the eye if we do things like cataracts and things. So there's our imaging. Um, there's our imaging app images. If we just click over to metrics now, click on Nathan's left eye. Now you can actually see what we get with those six radial images. Let's click on camera image. Now, unfortunately, I, I could have played around and got one of those spokes through Nathan's PI, but that's not really the point of why I did this. Why I did the metrics app is just to really show you how this app has been calibrated to actually measure the eye. Now, what we could actually do is bring this ray tracing line across the cornea. And what's amazing about that is you can actually see via ray tracing how light would bend through Nathan's cornea, how it enters down through his pupil, okay? But with the metrics app, I can, of course, measure distances. So this measure distance button down at the bottom corner allows me to do anything I want, really. So I can double click on the cornea itself, and that will just give me um, this measurement in pink. 
And those of you that maybe are using Anterion, one thing we can actually do on top of this now is we can even double click the line to get a secondary measurement on top of the primary measurement we took. So say I wanted to measure Nathan's epithelium there, I could drag a little caliper there. And again, I can keep clicking measure distance and add, um, I think it should let me do another one there as well. So yeah, you can drag that secondary line up and down. Now, the other thing we can do um, is actually measure the chamber angles, of course, which is why uh, one of the big reasons of using this scan. Now, what you need for that is you do actually need to do some work. So you can see that these numbers at the moment um, don't really have anything in them. And that's because at this point in time, we still need to set the um, scleral spur and the interior chamber angle recess point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that on one of these, just so you get the idea. Um, and what we do is we zoom in, we'll pick Nathan's temporal chamber angle there. And again, I'm going to set my scleral spur. So as I said before, we're going to follow that contrast line up and put a little yellow dot where that scleral spur meets the cha anterior chamber angle. And I'll set the recess point where just about I can see the root of the anterior chamber angle. Do that on the other side. For the sake of time, I'll just quickly click on these. OK, now once I've set those. Now look what happens. All our measurements light up on this um, on this image and we can actually see everything that the anterior is capable um, of measuring with the with the um, with the metrics app. So here we've got all the different measurements from white to white and um, the actual vault of the lens chamber to chamber. I mean, I don't even have time to go through all these uh, different abbreviations, but anyone who's involved in anterior segment imaging, imaging um, sorry, surgery will be familiar with these measurements. And we can also even calculate the actual volume of the anterior chamber as well um, with this metrics app. And if I were to complete all of those six radial cuts, it would actually give me a 3D map of Nathan's anterior chamber. And just with that one um, measurement I've made, you can see how um, narrow his, his angles are on this map that's showing quite a, a narrow field there. So that's the anterior chamber angle, 500 Michael, and that's the um, anterior um, angle opening distance as well at the bottom. So that's the metrics app and that's the imaging app. Um, I think I've run out of time for doing any more imaging. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming to our live workshops. We hope you found them useful. I do want to thank Emily and Nathan who do work incredibly hard behind the scenes. It may not look it, but there is quite a technical marvel going on for us to um, mix all the microphones and cameras. So really huge thanks to them. Um, and yes, please join us next time. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much.